and that's how you know it's 9.15 in the morning. All right, so I got my car, and I am a little past Rotterdam. No, I'm past Den Haag, and I'm on my way to Rotterdam. Rotterdam. Yeah, and then down into Belgium. Yeah, I'm going to Bruges. This is Bruges. I have arrived. That's my room up there. That one on the right. This is the courtyard of the Hotel Academy here in Bruges, or Brugge, as they say in Flemish. Flemish being a very much Dutch-like language, and in the south they speak Walloon, which is very similar to French. There's differences, I think, in both of them, but they are pretty much mutually intelligible. The French with the Walloon and the Dutch with the Flemish. Beautiful town. You know, you're gonna have the cool horse carriages, you're gonna have the result. That's all right. The charm is worth it. church you don't want to miss sometimes you see these little small alleys you got to check these out oh look at this place Well, this whole city center, as you can probably imagine, has been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The same as Amsterdam, which means you cannot change any of the facades. You could change interior stuff if you had to, like even connecting two previously unconnected properties, but they don't mess around. You want to get that World UNESCO World Heritage Site, you've got to follow the rules. So I thought I would uh, try some of this local fare. Have the typical Belgian cheese ball, I guess. Cheese croquette and local beer. So good. So this doofus will come into the picture later. I thought he was German because of the plates on his car, but uh, I will let his nationality be a surprise. I despise him.
right. It's a little after eight in the morning here in Bruges. It's a little rainy. This is it. This is the place, man. I'm walking to get some breakfast at a place I found open. A lot of places open at nine or 10, but I found this place open at eight. And look, a canal. A gate to a canal, which I guess at some point you could get on a boat. And come and land here. Look, another gate. Another entry to a canal that must have had some more action in years past. I don't mind the rain at all. I'm gonna guess that these are some sort of symbol of the city. So a beautiful little courtyard. All right, let's find this restaurant. What a beautiful town. I think this is where they get the boats. Or I think this is the one I'm going to do, this, this boat company here. A thousand years ago, Bruges was a major textile hub, making it a very wealthy city. In the 14th century, they were a booming economy as big as London, with a population of 40,000. The Golden Age was over in the 16th century, and the town suffered for generations. Then, 400 years later, the place was rediscovered, and the tourists started coming. And here I am, just as it's supposed to be. I <laughs> So I just stumbled into this place where I heard these old guys chatting. I could tell it was like a local hangout. And I uh, just wanted to experience that, have a coffee, listen to the Flemish. I think there's supposed to be a breakfast spot right up here somewhere. Maybe I'll get a juice or something. Oh, there it is, right here. That was very fresh, very good. Let's go down and see about the boats. That's how you know it's 9.15 in the morning. This is the market square. A canal used to come all the way up to the square where farmers would come from the countryside and sell their wool and flax. The locals would turn it into textiles. Look at all these good horses. Look at all these good ones.
The Bruges Belfry is part of an impressive 13th century hall's building. In the Middle Ages, the hall was used for storing and displaying the much coveted Flemish cloth, as well as other goods. In its present form, the 83 meter high belfry is made up of three building layers. The bottom two square sections built in brick during the 13th century. The top octagonal lantern tower in Vermont limestone was built between 1482 and 1486. Pretty nice. I'm just waiting to get on the boat. Sitting here in the little cross section of town making a time lapse. Have a look. Pretty cool, right? This looks like a it's an hour long and it was only 10 euros, so should be good. This is the Church of Our Lady, highest brick tower in the Low Countries, 122 meters high. The tombs of Charles the Bald and Mary of Burgundy can be found inside. This is the Boniface Bridge, built in 1910, also known as the Lover's Bridge. These are private houses built in the 18th and 19th century. On the right side, we have a very old hospital, St. John's, has not been used since 1976. It has a very old pharmacy and there is now a museum inside. This is the lowest bridge in town. All of the swans are protected by the city. If you kill a swan, it's five years in prison. All of these buildings belong to the old hospital. The windows are all Murano glass and finished in Dusseldorf. The Belfry Tower, 83 meters. It leans over about a meter and it was built in the 12th century. This lovely tea house goes unused because, well, there's a lot of good Belgian beer. No time for tea. In 1821, Napoleon, making up for a past mistake, gave the city the fish market after he stole the Madonna from the church in 1792. He had to give it back, so he also gave the fish market just to say he was sorry. There's a scene in the movie In Bruges where Colin Farrell jumps out the window here. Decided to stop and have a beer and some spaghetti bolognese because the man's got to eat. All right, after another little nap, after those two beers, it was necessary. While I'm reset, I'm gonna go have some coffee. That place across the channel there looks good. I'm gonna walk over there.
like you can have a nice coffee here. I tried getting coffee, but they were either closing or just super rude. I went back to town for the caffeine my body craved. I think I need to focus on getting a coffee, actually. I think that's more important. 